Welcome everybody to a look at another imprint release and it is 1979's Ravages. So this is directed by Richard Crock uh, Compton. Uh, there's a Crompton there. Uh, yeah, but I've not seen anything else from him before. And to be honest, the rest of his filmography looks really rather quite underwhelming. Uh, this is a science fiction action film clocking in at 89 minutes, no, 91 minutes long. And uh, yeah, stars the likes of Richard Harris, who I've seen in 14 other films. Favourites from him are the likes of Robin and Marion, Orca, The Killer Whale, The Cassandra Crossing, Juggernaut and Patriot Games. Also stars Ernest Borgnine, who I've seen in 24 other films. Favourites from him are the likes of Bad Day at Black Rock, Marty, The Mob and The Poseidon Adventure. So also stars Anne Turkill, who was also in The Cassandra Crossing, as well as Humanoids from the Deep. And finally, Woody Strode, who was in the likes of The Professionals, The Italian Connection and Vigilante. So in the aftermath of a nuclear holocaust, animal-like creatures known as the Ravagers roam the earth and kill all survivors, most of which are known as Flockers. A man named Falk witnesses the, uh, his wife's murder by the creatures. Seeking vengeance, Falk becomes a vigilante himself. So, uh, yeah, this undoubtedly has its boring moments. And if you were expecting Ernest Borgnine to be in this a lot, especially considering he is literally billed second to Richard Harris, then you're going to be sorely disappointed. As, um, yeah, he appears, quite frankly, in only the last 15 minutes of the film. And even then, he's only in a few scenes. Um, that said, Richard Harris is really good in the lead role, as he plays a character who was only apparently six when the world ended in endured a nuclear holocaust. So even though he is a grown-up, he does have a somewhat childlike view of the world. The rest of the cast is good. The production is great, with some really rather interesting desolate settings. The action is solid, especially in the ending, when there's a, this shit that is blowing up and all sorts. It's really rather quite fun. And even though the pacing at times could be better, it still doesn't outstay its welcome at being barely 90 minutes long. Where this really falls down, though, is that there isn't enough plot and the characterization to fully sustain its running time overall. So, uh, yeah, the plot is quite, quite lacking, actually, outside of the first act where his wife gets killed and he ends up killing one of the Ravagers. And then basically after that, he's just on the run from them. He's not quite seeking vengeance against them as much as that uh, plot premise suggests. He's more on the run from them. It just so happens that he kills them when they eventually get to him. So, uh, yeah, overall, though, a decent film. It's nothing mind-blowing, and there are certainly far better, you know, post-apocalyptic films from this period. I mean, Mad Max was literally released in the same year as this, and that is far better than this. Um, and if you want to compare to other early 70s efforts like The Omega Man, that, again, is also slightly better than this. It's not perfect by any means, but definitely does feel like it is in a post-apocalyptic world because while this does have some desolate settings to it, it ultimately feels quite small-scale. You can kind of see that they're filming on small sets or in smaller set locations, whereas in The Omega Man, you've literally got Charlton Heston driving around in a convertible down these quite clearly massively abandoned streets that are really rather quite large. It really does feel like this city is abandoned, whereas here we're um, kind of limited to a steel mill, a few streets on an industrial uh, area. Um, there's one cool bit with um, these rockets that are uh, left abandoned in this like kind of like overgrown area. But for the most part, the desolate aspects are kind of left, in terms of the bigger bits, are kind of left to the uh, ending with the... Uh, with a ship that is found where it's got a lot of people uh, hiding on with a lot of supplies led by Ernest Borgnine's character. So, um, yeah, but on the whole, it's fairly decent. You can, Like I said, you can do a lot worse. There are certainly, uh, like, Italian efforts from, like, the 80s that you would, uh, that are also post-apocalyptic post that came about after Mad Max that are comfortably worse than this, but still, you could do a lot better, as I've already stated with the Omega Man and Mad Max. But still, you have a printed disc with some uh, a shot from the, the film and the background. Unfortunately, though, there are no extras. Nada. None at all. Don't know why, but as you can see, nothing at all. Just a uh, 1080p high-definition presentation of the film. Um, looks fine enough in terms of the Blu-ray. Um, I don't believe this actually had any release since the VHS or Laserdisc era. Um, don't even think it had a DVD. So at least it is now more widely available. But ultimately, it's still only a 3 out of 5 film. But I do like the um, artwork that this has, the original artwork. 
which you can only really find low quality blue uh blurry versions of online so yeah it's nice to have that and i like the fact that 1991 was apparently some far flung future even in 1979 which is only 12 years so kind of charming in that regard but yeah still ultimately there are better post-apocalyptic films out there that you can find so uh yeah this was being the uh, 300th release from imprint as you can see this was celebrated with a poster that has all of the titles of every film that they've released so far. Now, I didn't actually buy this film. It came with the four others that were released alongside it. We've already looked at the likes of Cold Steel and Green Ice, uh, but we've still yet to look at the likes of Let's Get Harry and The Blind Swordsman Satucci. But because I did bought those four, apparently I got this fifth one as a uh, spare. So even though I wasn't planning on getting it, at least, you know, I did get it for free. So yeah, this is a poster that comes with this batch of films. As you can see, every film they've released up to the most recent one, which is not actually on here as far as I can see. Um, but you do have Let's Get Harry there. Whether or not it's actually in order, I'm not sure. But I can't see Ravages on there. But I don't think it is actually in order because you've got Cold Steel before The Man in Half Moon Street, which I obviously reviewed quite a while ago. So, yeah, I imagine it's not in actual order. So, yeah, but it's a really nice, cool little extra. And it's on really nice, thick paper as well. So it's not going to easily rip. And, you know, it's nice to just have a uh, roundup of plenty of great films. I do own quite a few of these, obviously, um, from my collection. But... I far from own all of them and uh, yeah it's just nice to have such a, a little bit of an oddity to uh, imprint and uh, the many many films that they've released some of which for the first time ever on blu-ray such as this one so uh, yeah but nonetheless thank you for watching if you have seen this film before i'd like to hear your thoughts on it and i'll see you in the next one bye